Sorrento on the shores of Port Phillip Bay. It's a beautiful part of the world. Behind me, the ferry terminal. Many a good eye fish mission has started there. Today, calamari, King George Whiting. I will eat well tonight. Come and see how we go. This morning, I reckon once that sun gets up, she might turn into a mill pond. You may have noticed I've been looking at my sounder the whole time I've been rigging up because I want to try and work out what my drift's going to do. No matter how good you are, you never know how you're going to drift until you actually do a drift, and then you can work out what's going to happen in the future. So, nice drift, about 200 metres here. All the gear set up. Once I know what I'm going to do, I'm then going to work out the depth, etc. try and find these squid, and then we're going to catch a few. So I was looking at the sound at, and I could see squid. And then I look across and my rod has a very large bend in it. So I know I've got a squid and it's amazing. We're actually sounding calamari on the hummingbird. Now there's a the squid coming up there. And this area is renowned for beautiful southern calamari, aren't they? Just beautiful, beautiful creatures. So I'm going to bring it up like this. And then I'm going to do the old hand line trick. Because I left the net at home. Some say good old Paul. Now, he's just hooked with one tentacle there. I should be able to just Grab him by the back like that. Look at those tentacles. Look at the way he is grabbing my hand. And in there is a beak just like a cockatoo or parrot beak. If that gets you, it is not pretty at all. There's the jig just in the tentacle there. And that is one beautiful, beautiful creature. Look at him. Look at the colours. Yep. There's a weight there. Yeah, that's a squid. And that is how we roll. We've literally sounded these squid. I'm so impressed. And every time we drift over them, we're getting some action. Now, this is on a little baby salmon. Here's my calamari coming up now. I'm going to swap rods. Oh, and this is really, really cool because we need these for bait. Look at that beautiful squid. They are such epic creatures. That just pinned again. And oh, there we go. Look at that. Now, that has taken. Oh, look at the water coming out. That is taking that little Australian salmon, and these baited jigs are unbelievable. What blows me away though, some days the squid eat the baited jigs, some days they only eat the artificial jigs, some days they only eat green jigs, some days blue jigs. They are incredible creatures. A lot of people say they're not that smart, but when they want to eat something, sometimes that's all they'll eat. Look at that guy changing colour. Oh! So before I put this rig down, I'll run you through it. There's my squid jig. I've got an extended pattern of about a metre. That is 10 pound instinct fluorocarbon. Then about a 30 centimetre dropper to my bomb sinker. The idea here, plenty of current. This drops straight down. I can see where it is on the sounder. The jig swims along behind it. The squid comes along and eats it. And then we eat well too. This is such an incredible place to fish for southern calamari. You can see the broken ground, the sand patches, the weed, the rock. There's plenty of fish here too. The squid come to lay their eggs around spring, and when they do, they come here in big numbers, and it's a lot of fun. That's solid. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I just said, while well, there's not much happening, maybe we should put the drone up, do some underwater. And as I said, it literally, bang. We got squidded. And that's a beautiful cephalopod coming up there. It's just hooked. Oh, I think this one's taken that cephia jig. Now, what are you do with squid? You've got to give and take. You can't just pull. You might pull a tentacle off. So go nice and slow. Pull him towards me. If he goes, he goes. You let him go and grab. And he's a bit dark in the last one. Oh, look at that. Okay. <sighs> Why am I not in the black extreme today? It would make so much more sense. This is a mess. Look at that though, the old Cephia flash boost. Look at that flash going side to side. This squid just couldn't help himself. I'm glad I bought a brush and a bucket. So a little tip when it comes to squidding. The best way to get squid ink off your boat is with salt water and as soon as you physically can. If you wait and it goes dry, it is not a good look. Look at that, it comes off straight away. 
but you've got to get into it. If this stuff bakes on, it is there forever. And the best thing about this sea deck, it doesn't absorb water or squid ink. It's important to get into the sand hole, not the weed. The weed will bring the whiting, but the sand is where they'll feed. I reckon this is exactly where I want to be. Just a touch further. That way I can always let out some more rope. And I reckon this is us. Always important to let enough anchor rope out. A lot of people just don't let enough anchor rope out and they end up dragging the anchor. The chain does all the work. It sits on the bottom and when the bow comes up, the chain lifts, that stops your anchor pulling. But I recommend three times the water depth. So seven metres here, at least 21 metres of rope. So, whiting love burley, and if you're burly for whiting, you will catch more, but you've got to get the burley down the bottom. I'm using this sea dog cage. It's got a massive weight on the bottom, about one and a half kilos. That'll keep it down the current. And we use pilchards for burley. These are diced pilchards. Here we've got some whole pillies. I'll put them in the pot, get them on the bottom. It'll take a little while, but once the whiting smell it, they will come. I was down at Tackle Morgan and yesterday I saw these beautiful instinct whiting prowler eggs. I thought, you know what? That could be nice and easy. I'll give it a go. was to come out in the water today just because it was such a beautiful day weather-wise. Then we had to make everything else work. But because we had a slack tide this morning, we thought we'll target squid and then try and turn the squid into whiting. So we're using squid strips. We just cut those little strips of squid up. We put them on the hook. They work an absolute treat. But while we've got the backups too, the pippies, the mussels, they can work extremely well. And if we weren't lucky enough to catch squid this morning, we'd still be a chance of getting some fish. got two hooks on it there and one of them's got the squid so it should come back for the squid always important when you're fishing to know what baits what rigs you got on which rod there he should come back and he dropped it so I've got a pippy on the top hook of that whiting prowler rig and I've got a squid on the bottom so I'm gonna drop it back there and wait again there he comes yes because I figured he'd come back for the squid and it's such a good tip to always know what rig what bait on which rod and reel. And I'd say it's a King George because he's swimming into the current. Look at that, beautiful King George whiting. How good are these things? And he took, let's have a look at this, very interesting. Let's have a look, he's actually taken the top hook and that's got the pippy on it and the squid is still there. So, so important to keep your baits in the water so that these fish have a chance to come back and get them. Nothing worse, you burl, you brought the fish in and then all of a sudden, you pull it out of his mouth and pull it away. In Victoria, 27 centimetres is legal. And I'll show you a little trick. I've marked my bait board just there with a bit of blue. I'll put my whiting here, put his nose against there. And you can see he is well and truly legal. He's probably about 35. That's a beautiful thing, look at that. Interesting fact, Sorrento was named in 1869 after its namesake, Sorrento in Italy. And another fact, that is where I had the best cup of coffee I've ever had in my life. These rod holders are so handy. It just gives you a beautiful spread and you can adjust the angle. I like to get my rods almost parallel to the water. I just got a bite. He's swimming towards me. That's a fish too. Come and have a look at this. Look at that silver flash in the water. That is a big dog. And that is so good. So nice to come into your own backyard on a glamour day and a plan comes together. Yep, got him. This is starting to become one of those unbelievable days that you just think, how lucky am I? It is literally going off. King George everywhere, glamour conditions. You'd think I was on the Gold Coast. It is so beautiful, look at that. Another big King George whiting. I am going to have a feast tonight. Little bites here. Yep, gotcha. And that feels whiting-ish. Things are starting to turn on, it's exciting. And I can see that silver flash in the current. There's no better thing to see. That's a nice fish too. Beautiful fish. The old whiting prowler rig, it is doing its thing. Look at that, off you don't mind Uncle Arthur.
just trying to put another bait on. I'm a bit excited about this. There he is in the water. Coming up towards me, you love it when they pull that rod tip down and when they literally go under the boat, you know they're good King George. That is a beautiful fish. Gee, they're impressive. I understand why people would travel into the sunny state of Victoria just to catch a fish like that. Because they are beautiful fish. They're actually, I think there's 35 species of whiting around the world. They get them in Poland, Indonesia, in places you wouldn't even dream of. But the King George whiting is the biggest. And they inhabit shallow water, like estuary water from a metre all the way to the edge of the continental shelf. That makes these fish very, very versatile. And on top of all that, extremely tasty. Interesting fact, the Collins settlement in Sorrento had the first public hospital, the first magistrate's court and the first post office in the region that later become known as Victoria. As you can see, the Suzuki is full lock to port. That's because our channel we want to fish is over here. The boat pulled around with the current. By doing this, it actually drags the back of the boat back around and keeps us in the perfect spot. Use your motor as a rudder. It's an excellent tool. Yep, yep, yep. Come on. And bang. Oh, and that rod's getting hit too. Look at this. Oh, I think this rod might be on it. <laughs> I might have an LB tangle, but I don't care because it's just gold. It is gold. Yes, definitely an LB tangle here, but you get it on the big jobs. It's going to be ugly, but it's going to be pretty cool too. Oh, this is a nice fish. Look at that. Look at that. This is a dead set cracker King George Whiting bite. And look at that Gamma Katsu worm hook. They are deadly on King George Whiting, size six in the black or the red. Best King George Whiting hook I've ever come across in my life. Seriously, double my catch rate. It's amazing the difference my spotters have made today. They literally have caught me every one of these fish. I can see that channel. I put that straight down the guts, and I reckon that has whiting written all over it. Unbelievable. Best tool in the shed. I literally cannot take a trick at the moment when it comes to trying to rebate and get jobs done. Every time I put a rod in the water, it is getting absolutely nailed and this is so much fun and I love the fact that I come to this location today because I've never ever fished here for King George Whiting in my life and I just thought keep to all the rules, keep it simple stupid and the fish will come and that is another cracking King George Whiting. Well this is possibly one of the greatest inventions in fishing, it's called the Whiting and Squid Tumbler Scaler Bag. So you get your King George Whiting and you literally put them in there and you tow this thing behind the boat on the wake and it descales the whiting, takes all the slime off and makes them about 1000 times easy to clean. Watch how simple this thing works. bag to roll on the outside of that wave the engine creates that first wave as it rolls knocks the scale and slime off I normally give it about five minutes so there's our bag of King George whiting look at that all these fish perfectly de-slimed and descaled that is just sensational so easy to clean you know what the skin it's one of the best bits Once de-slimed and descaled, whiting it easy to clean. I'm using the long, skinny Victory, which I just love for whiting. Go in behind the pec fin, turn, follow that down, feel the backbone as you go down, just run parallel, take that off, and look at that. A magnificent fillet of King George whiting. All I do now, just take that little rib cage out there, a few pin bones, that'll be some of the best eating fish you'll ever wrap your lips around.